Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make chocolate macarons. As you can see here, this is a sandwich cookie. And it takes two chocolate almond uh, meringue cookies and sandwiches them together with the chocolate ganache. We're going to start this recipe by making the meringue cookies. Now, this chocolate macaron is very similar to the, the other macaron recipe on the site. The main difference is that this one contains cocoa powder. So I'm not going to go into quite as much detail in this video as I did in the other one. So if you are new to making macarons, you might want to watch that video as well. Now, when there's a lot of technique here and when you measure your ingredients, I'm only going to give you weight measurements. That is the most accurate way and we want accuracy when you're making macarons. So you will need a digital scale. Luckily, um, these days you can buy digital scales almost anywhere and the price range, they really can be quite inexpensive. You can buy them on Amazon for under $20. So it's a good investment. So for our ingredients, you will need 100 grams of ground almonds. You can buy ground almonds, they, they can be called almond meal or almond flour, or you could just take an equal amount of whole blanched almonds and process them until they're finely ground. You will also need um, 170 grams of confectioner sugar, you may know that as powdered or icing sugar, and you will need just 15 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now you can um, use either the natural unsweetened or the Dutch process, either one. Now, we need to mix those three ingredients together. You could just do this in a large bowl with a wire whisk, or I just a fast way is just put it in a food processor and process it until they're all mixed together. And once you do that, then what I do is I like to sift it, which I have done. I just like to sift um, the ingredients onto a piece of uh, parchment or wax paper, and I'm just using uh, a wire a strainer if you have a, a actual sifter you could use that and that way we get rid of any large lumps of almonds that could be in there and it also gets some more air into uh, our uh, ingredients so once you've done that let's put that aside we're ready to make our meringue if you have an electric stand mixer like i have here use a whisk attachment you could just um, also use a hand mixer or if you have a strong arm you could use a wire whisk and make sure your bowl is really clean free of grease because if there's any grease on the bowl or the uh, your wire whisk it does, your egg whites will not whip up as nicely now you will need a hundred grams of egg whites that's about three large eggs and you need them to be aged by that I mean at least the day before you're going to make your macarons just separate your eggs, put your egg whites in a bowl, and then just take either, you know, I, I'm just taking paper towel, you could take like um, cheesecloth as well. Just put it over the top and put it in your fridge and uh, let them sit and just let them breathe like that. And then before, a while before you make your macarons, take them out and you want to bring your egg whites to room temperature before you start making a meringue because they do whip up better if they're uh, at room temperature. So you will need to put that in our bowl, along with a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That just helps to stabilize the uh, egg whites. Now, uh, you can find, normally you find cream of tartar in your spice section of your uh, grocery store. Some people have emailed me and say they just can't find it. You could le just leave it out. It, it's only to stabilize your whites, so you don't absolutely need it. So what I'm going to do is beat the whites just until they start getting foamy on well, medium speed. Okay, that looks good. So this is what you're looking for, just a, a nice foam. Actually, you can, as your, mic, as your beater is going around, you can kind of start to see the tracks in the uh, meringue, so that's when you know 
it's time to start adding your sugar. So you need 35 grams of super fine white sugar. You may know that as castor sugar. And really all that is is granulated white sugar that's been processed until it's really finely ground. So what I do is I just take 35 grams of granulated white sugar, put it in my food processor, process it for maybe, you know, 30 seconds, and I have super fine sugar. The reason we're using super fine is it dissolves quicker in to the meringue. If you can't find it, or, or you don't have food processor, you can just use regular uh, granulated white sugar as well. So what we're gonna do on medium speed is gradually add the sugar, and then just I'm gonna just keep beating. After I add the sugar, I'm just gonna keep beating on medium high speed until I have uh, stiff peaks. And that they're nice and shiny and glossy, and they when you raise your beater, it's, it's stiff, which I will show you. Okay, so we'll start adding the sugar. Just put a little in. I'm going to check it. Just, we don't want to over whip because then your meringue starts to break apart, which is not what we want. So just give it a quick stir. And then to check to see if your meringue, right, just kind of slowly raise your wire whisk. And see that? See how it's kind of like straight up? That's what you're looking for. Now, sometimes if it's not quite, you'll get a real like kind of a beak. So just beat it a little more. You want that straight up. This is an important part. There's kind of two very important parts when you're making macaron. It's to, one is to get your meringue at the, beaten to the right point. And the second part is mixing in the almond mixture into your meringue. So I'm gonna put this in a large, larger bowl. And the reason is I find it easier to mix in my almond mix, uh, mixture when there's a large wide bowl. The problem is this isn't that, it's deep, but it's not that wide. And I like lots of room to fold it in. So now, that's just beautiful. What we're gonna do is add our almond mixture into our meringue, probably three, four additions. You don't wanna add it all at once because then you have to fold so much. And I like to sift it one more time just to make sure everything's all mixed together and get some air in there. I'll just sift it over the top. And then you also get any, if there's even more large pieces of almond, you can get rid of that. So now I'm just using a spatula. And what we're going to do is kind of fold, go through the center, up and over and around. And then I like to kind of squish it against the side. The thing is when you're, typically when you're working with meringue and you're folding it into anything, you kind of worry, oh, I, I shouldn't over mix. You don't want to deflate your meringue. Well, the opposite is true with making macarons. You actually want to get rid of some of the air. So you don't have to be scared of doing this, you know. You don't have to be really gentle, as you can see. So I'll just get that in. Sift a little more. And again, I'm just going to scrape this down, make sure I get it. Now, the first time you make macarons, they may not be perfect, and, but don't worry about it. This, I mean, it takes a little practice. Luckily, even if they don't look perfect, they still will taste great. So, all I can say is practice. Practice does make perfect with these macarons. But you'll feel such a sense of accomplishment. I just love making them. And once 
once you master the basic recipe, I mean, you can flavor them differently. You can add food coloring. I mean, use all different fillings. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. Oh, I'm just folding it in. Make sure you get the bottom. And like I said, press against the side. You do want to get some of the air out of that meringue. It's, kind of a, it's a unique technique here. Okay, it looks almost... Make sure we get it all mixed in. Check the bottom. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Really thick, falls back in a ribbon. So that's basically your macaron batter. So now, this recipe will give you about 20, uh, 22 macarons when you put them both together. So that's about, I'm doing 45. 15 to each sheet, so you need three baking sheets lined with uh, parchment paper. Now, uh, to get all your macarons the same size, because we're making sandwich cookies, what I do is I make a template. I've made one here. And what I do, what I did is just take a piece of parchment paper and used a ring and made, I got 15 on here, one and a half inch rounds, which is about four centimeters. And then I can use this as a guide because it's really, we're gonna pipe the batter. And I don't know about you, but I find it hard to get it just perfect without having a template to go from. If you're really good at piping, then you probably don't need this. But So I just put that down, and then I put my piece of parchment paper over top. So then you will need a piping bag. And we're going to fill it. And what I like to do so that as I'm filling the bag with the uh, batter, it doesn't kind of come out the end, is just take your bag, just twist it, and stick it in like that. So that way, you're not, pu you're not putting in this end and coming out the other end. And then just fold down the top. And then don't put all your batter into your piping bag at once, because as you're piping, you're working that batter. And we don't want to work it too much. So I'm only going to put some in. And then I can fill it later. Now the important thing when you're piping is to pipe straight down with even pressure and just keep within the circle. You don't have to be the greatest piper to uh, get these all right. So just press down, just try to get all down the end, twist, and then you can, and we're ready to go. Okay. like so within that circle. Okay, so once you finish one sheet, just hold on to the top and then grab the template and just like so. And then we want to get rid of any air bubbles. So just Give this a, a nice tap, and then pipe your other two sheets, and then what we need to do is let them rest. I mean, it depends on the temperature and humidity in your kitchen. I find somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes. And what, you want, what we're looking for is when the top kind of gets, it's no longer tacky. It almost forms like a little crust. So when you take your finger and tap it, it doesn't stick. So, uh, and also, while these sit, you really want to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 160 degrees Celsius. Now, I like to bake two sheets at a time because we are going to have three sheets. So if you want to do that, then have your oven racks in the top and bottom uh, third of your oven. Otherwise, I mean, you can do it one sheet at a time and have it in the center. So when I come back, 
will be, uh, I'll, I'm going to pipe the rest and let them sit and come back, we'll bake them off. So we're now ready to bake our macarons. One thing I forgot to mention is when you're piping your uh, macarons, use a half inch, that's one centimeter, plain tip. So now the way to check to, to make sure it's time to uh, bake your macarons, just to touch one in, you can tell it's no longer tacky. It's almost formed a little crust. So now I'm going to bake two sheets at once. Somewhere, I mean, every oven is so different. So I'm saying somewhere between 14 and 16 minutes. Now, if you have a convection fan forced oven like I do, it tends to take a little shorter time than if you just have a, a regular oven. What you're looking for is your macaron will have um, risen a little bit. There will be that foot on the bottom. And when you touch one, it'll just start to come away from the parchment paper. So um, if you're doing two sheets at once, halfway through baking, uh, rotate your pans top to bottom, front to back. Okay, cookies are done. As you can see, nice flat tops. Maybe hard to see, but they're nice rise. There is a little um, foot or collar, whatever you want to call it, around the bottom. Now, what we want to do is let these cool completely in the pan on a wire rack. So, what I'm going to do is bake off my last pan, and then we will come back and make our filling. So now we're ready to fill our macarons. Now you could use any type of filling, um, a jam, a buttercream, really anything. Um, but since we may, we're making a chocolate macaron, I decided we need a chocolate ganache. Very simple to make. In a uh, heat proof bowl, put four ounces, that's 120 grams of your favorite uh, semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate. And then heat together a half a cup, that's 120 milliliters of heavy cream or heavy whipping cream. And that's cream with a 35 to 40% butterfat content, along with a half a tablespoon, six grams of butter. And just heat that, like I said, just so it comes up to a simmer. And then just pour it over your chocolate. And then all you need to do is just gently stir that until the chocolate melts. Now at this point, you could add a little liqueur, maybe a tablespoon. Uh, you could add even some vanilla extract if you want. So once it's all melted like that, as you can see, it's still pretty liquid. So um, you really need to let this sit at room temperature, normally a few, at least a few hours to thicken up. You could speed it up by putting it in the fridge, but be very careful and keep taking it out and stirring it as it cools. What I tend to do if I'm making uh, macarons the day before I make it, and then what I do is just make it, and once it cools down, cover it with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature. And then the next day I have, it's all ready and then just give it a good stir. If you find, like after a day especially, it can get really thick. What I do is sometimes just pop it in the microwave just for a few seconds to soften it, or you could put it over a saucepan of simmering water just to kind of get it like this, because we're going to pipe it, so you want it soft enough for that. And then I like to, um, like I said, pipe the filling. So I've just got a little disposable pastry bag. You could just use like a, a little plastic bag. I'm fitting this with just a small plain tip. Really, you don't even need a tip. You can just cut off the end of the bag and just put some of your ganache in there. Just try to get all the air out of your bag and then just turn it and hold it. 
Now, normally, once your, uh, mat, your cookies have cooled, what you do is just lift it up and just peel it off of the parchment paper. And then try to match up. You know, it's hard to get everyone perfectly round. So try to just get two that are about the same size. And then just turn it over and pipe. Now, put as much or as little filling as you want. Don't go right out to the edge because when you put the two cookies together, it does kind of push the filling outward. So I'm going to put lots of filling today. Okay, so there we have our chocolate macaron. I'm going to give it a try. Oh, very nice. The day you make these, and if you sandwich them together, the, um, the outside crust is quite crispy. And then you have the filling. And both of the flavors of the cookie and the filling are separate. Personally, what I like to do is fill them, and then I put them in the fridge covered to mature, like at least a day, often two days. And then I find what happens is the cookie kind of softens and the, the ganache kind of permeates the cookies and they all kind of taste like together, the flavors mingle and that's, but bring them to room temperature before you serve them. So um, enjoy, have fun with it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.